What if I were to tell you that Goku's name actually has a lot of significance to the overall plot of the Dragon Ball series? First off, what does Goku's name actually mean? Well, because Goku is based on a Chinese figure in mythology adapted by Japanese culture, there are a lot of different interpretations of Goku's name, but the first that we're going to look at comes to us from Derek Pajula from the Dow of DragonBall.com, and he explains that the first character in Goku's name means grandchild or monkey grandchild. Aware, awake, enlightened, or wisdom is the second character for Goku's name, and the third character for Goku's name is emptiness, void, sky, space, or nothingness. So essentially, within the Japanese context, Goku's name means monkey grandchild aware of emptiness. This is a Buddhist name given to Goku's literary forebearer, Sun Wukong, in Journey to the West by Sun Wukong's immortal master, Budo Taoist master, Sabuiti. This prophetic name foretells of his Buddhahood. In Dragon Ball, Sun Goku's name is given to him by Sun Gohan. Sun Gohan only has his name in Dragon Ball because Sun Goku first has his name in Journey to the West. Goku calls Gohan his gramps while Gohan thinks of Goku as his grandchild and Goku is an empty-headed monkey boy who enlightens faster than everyone else so he's both a literal and symbolic monkey grandchild aware of emptiness and that is just a great example of the wordplay that Toriyama plays on with Goku's name but it goes even further than that first of all let's look at the term enlightenment because that is the kanji that Goku constantly wears on his clothes and let's examine what exactly that term means enlightenment means to be awakened to a new perception of reality that's what it means to become enlightened now enlightenment Enlightenment is something that that martial artists themselves hope to achieve as martial artists so that way they can achieve a perception of reality that is the most effective in combat. Now the specific form of combat that Master Roshi taught Goku is known as Budo and Enlightenment is the final stage of Budo in terms of their martial art practices and beliefs. So Goku's journey in terms of his Enlightenment is actually a reflection of this idea and not the classic spiritual moral aspects of Enlightenment. So essentially he is trying trying to achieve enlightenment within the context or the framework of martial arts or Budo. Now, Sun Wukong's name can be translated to the immortal awakened to enlightenment, and that really is a great summary of Sun Wukong's journey as he becomes a Taoist immortal and then finds Buddhist enlightenment. Now, unlike Sun Wukong, who found Taoist immortality first and then Buddhist enlightenment, Goku's journey is actually a reversal of this concept, and I'm going to explain exactly how. Now, you'll notice that I keep using the word awakened a lot, and if you're a Dragon Ball fan, the first thing you should really think of when you think of someone awakening to a new perception of reality is Goku awakening after having his memory erased due to falling and hitting his head. That is another play on words and that is another play on Goku's name, the fact that he loses his memory and awakens to a new perception of reality. Now, why is Grandpa Gohan's character so important in terms of his influence on Goku? Well, there is a lot of symbolism to hint at exactly what's going on here, but just to summarize it, one of the greatest pages to help summarize exactly what's going on here is the addition from Jocko the Galactic Patrolman and Dragon Ball Minus to where Goku is found by Grandpa Gohan. He essentially tells him that he's going to help teach him some manners and teach him how to behave in human society. And if you'll look here, this is essentially Gohan attempting to tame Goku. Now, one of the sole factors of Buddhist enlightenment, one of the sole things that you have to achieve is taming the monkey mind. And what you're seeing here is symbolic of that concept. Grandpa Gohan is taming the monkey mind and Goku is a literal representation and later the Saiyans of the monkey mind and the ego. Now, why am I so confident in saying that that is Goku's role in the story? Because that is literally Sun Wukong's role in the story. He is a literal representation of the monkey mind in Journey to the West. The monkey mind is also a representation of the ego in martial arts. And essentially the entire idea is that Goku, from the very beginning, what he got from Gohan, if you really want to summarize it, other than calling it a Buddha nature, it's essentially his pure heart. His pure hard that you know of in the series if you if you're wondering what a buddha nature is that is the best way to summarize what a buddha nature is and that is what gohan gifted to goku that's the reason that when goku meets master roshi he can ride the nimbus he's pure of heart because he was raised by grandpa gohan that was essentially a gift from his grandfather was to inherit this buddha nature so essentially what grandpa gohan did is he took goku's monkey mind and he pushed it and he used it for something productive which is exactly what happened to some wukong and journey to the west he was a murderer raging monkey who was impulsive and loved fighting and Buddha essentially used that to protect the monk Tripitaka on the journey to the west and eventually led to Sun Wukong becoming the victorious fighting Buddha and that's essentially
essentially what you're seeing here with Goku at the very beginning of Dragon Ball. At the very beginning of Dragon Ball, he has achieved what Sun Wukong achieves at the end of Journey to the West in terms of having a Budon nature. Now, that does not mean that he is verbatim like Sun Wukong because he does not have the missing ingredient to balance him out to make him like Sun Wukong, and that is essentially his pride as a Saiyan. But originally in Dragon Ball, before the context of Saiyans, his pride as a martial artist is kind of what they use to balance out his Buddha nature. In fact, his pride as a martial artist has now been repackaged as true Saiyan pride in the Granola arc because Goku, prior to meeting Raditz, whenever he faced Piccolo, the reason he was willing to die to defeat Piccolo was due to his pride as a martial artist, which is why, you know, despite the fact that there's that gap between the original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, if you take that gap away and you look at the Piccolo saga as a connecting factor to the saga with Raditz, Vegeta, and Nappa, you'll see that Goku has always sort of been a representation of true Saiyan pride since the very beginning it's just been disguised as his pride as a martial artist and that essentially balances out his universal concern for life is his pride as a martial artist now one thing I wanted to debunk real, real quick before I go any further and discuss the importance of Roshi's character is the fact that a lot of fans think that Goku only cared about life after meeting Kami this is something I commonly hear amongst fans or, and it couldn't be more incorrect when Goku faces major Metalatron, he actually cites a, a Buddhist prayer after killing a robot. So Goku has a Buddha nature and due to the fact that he has a Buddha nature, he has a concern for all life, but he's also a representation of the victorious fighting Buddha and the victorious fighting Buddha, the entire point of the victorious fighting Buddha is that he can kill without impure intentions. And that's essentially what Grandpa Gohan did for Goku. Goku can kill beings without impure intentions due to the fact that he has a pure heart. Now let's move on to Master Roshi. Now I said earlier that this journey for Goku is essentially the reverse of what Sun Wukong went through. Well, the reason for that is is because Goku, he attained Buddhist enlightenment first as a child due to the influence of Grandpa Gohan, and then later, he learns Taoist martial arts from Master Roshi, and in Journey to the West, it's the exact opposite. Sun Wukong first learns Taoist martial arts from his immortal master, Sabuiti, and then he eventually attains his Buddha nature. Now, each one is used to balance out the other in each case. So, in Goku's case, the rules that Master Roshi set forth for Goku to practice in martial arts are essentially what he needs to not only manipulate reality in his favor, but also to survive and practice martial arts correctly. And the reason for that is, is what Master Roshi taught Goku is the principles of Budo, which prevent him from making selfish decisions and falling victim to his ego or his monkey mind. And we actually see this play out firsthand whenever Goku faces Frieza the first time. When Goku takes on the pride of the Saiyan race and finds his personal balance and becomes the legendary super Super Saiyan, he essentially plays a very similar role to Buddha whenever Buddha defeated Sun Wukong and essentially did what he needed to to set him on the path towards enlightenment. And that is the reason that Goku's iconic kanji makes its first appearance on his way to Namek. Now, Goku's effect on people is a huge thing in Dragon Ball. And the reason for that is, is because Goku's name literally means enlightenment. So anytime you see Goku facing these new opponents over and over and over again and you see the effect that he has on them, the reason he is having having that effect on them is because of what Roshi taught Goku. By essentially taming the ego in martial arts and behaving the way he does with his Buddha nature, he has an effect on others and he awakens others around him to a new perception of reality. So essentially, the effect that Grandpa Gohan and Roshi both had on Goku, he has that effect on everyone around him, not only as people, but as martial artists. And the series actually plays on this a lot. One of the greatest examples is his first fight with Vegeta. Vegeta is a literal representation of the ego in martial arts himself and he is first humbled and enlightened and awakened to a new perception of reality due to his interaction with Goku. Tien, the same thing. Piccolo, the same thing. There are so many instances of Goku facing a character and this character being awakened to a new perception of reality that that is the truth behind Goku's name and the role that it actually plays in the plot. A few other really good examples, one of my favorite in fact, is the fight between Zamasu and Goku. Zamasu goes from complaining about the fact that mortals will never find enlightenment and then he faces a literal representation of it and fails to understand it himself. The entire point of him coming into contact with Goku was to understand that mortals aren't as bad as he thought and he was facing a literal representation of enlightenment and failed to understand that due to his own ego, due to how pretentious he was. In fact, prior to Goku's fight with Zamasu, he faces hit and practices healthy martial arts practices
is essentially taming his ego by giving up against Hit, which causes Hit to find enlightenment, something that Zamasu openly failed to do. A modern example that's happened really recently is Vegeta coming to the conclusion that he comes to in Dragon Ball Super Super Hero in terms of his performance in combat through meditation, being awakened to a new perception of reality, and then testing that against Goku and finding success. That is symbolic for Goku being enlightenment and the effect that he has on others. And then right now in the Dragon Ball Super Super Hero adaptation of the manga, Broly is learning to tame his rage-based impulsive nature due to Goku being a literal representation of enlightenment, literally sporting the kanji that represents his name against Broly. So if you go back and you watch the series and you keep this in mind, you keep in mind that this is the intention of Goku's character to spread this effect that Grandpa Gohan had on him to the entire world, you will understand that Goku's character is much deeper and much more impactful than people like to give him credit for. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't talk no jutsu, okay? Goku's methods have a formula to them. They have they have science behind how it works, right? So what happens is Goku literally breaks the ego of these evil maniacal beings, which causes them to question their role in the universe and then start practicing martial arts, which again, the concept of martial arts is literally centered around taming the ego itself. So as a result, when they start practicing martial arts, they start to humble themselves. They start to practice is taming the ego and they naturally change whether they want to or not because they start to see the fruits of their labor as martial artists and they realize that there is merit to this practice. We see this firsthand with Black Frieza over everyone else. Frieza is just as evil as he's ever been, but he's now realized the fruits of Goku's methods. That's why Goku can turn even the most evil of evil into a better person in some sense just by encouraging them to practice martial arts. So if you've learned anything from today's video, I hope that you learned that the Dragon Ball series is a bit more nuanced than people give it credit for. I know it has a reputation as a punchy punchy anime manga, but due to the fact that it has narrative themes that is borrowed from Journey to the West, which is a very deep story and narrative, and the fact that it is an allegory for martial arts, it has a lot of deep narrative themes that aren't necessarily surface level, and that's the reason that the series itself is a show and not tell type series. Because if you can understand these references and the symbolism that Toriyama implements in his story, then you can understand the overall narrative just a little bit better. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.